Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tip. I'm glad you made it. Hey, look, I'm always scouring and looking for different things to share with you to keep you uh, informed and up to date with different information that's coming out. Now, I did happen to see an article that was published June 14th. So what is that, two days ago? So an article that was published two days ago, I'm scrolling through it here to see how long it is. It's not very long. So I will uh, read this to you because my reading skills are really awesome and I really appreciate anybody who can hang on till the end. Uh, so the headline here is what caught my attention and I jumped into it a little bit and kind of did a quick skim of the uh, of the uh, 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 the news article here and, and wanted to share it uh, with you. So, uh, and especially because it's new, right? So the article's new. So this uh, headline is Bill signed into law that increases compensation benefits for veterans. Hey, I'll read that. So here on the very front, um, at the top of this, it has a picture, and I may use this for the thumbnail for you. Um, the, uh, it has a picture and it says, Senators Jerry Moran and John Tester signed a bipartisan bill into law that increases compensation benefits for veterans. And then this, uh, in parentheses, it says Senator Jerry Moran's office, uh, which is uh, I'm, I'm the picture. So uh, again, published June 14th at 4.31, so in the evening there. And uh, let's start off. Senators Jerry Moran and John Tester signed a bipartisan bill into law that increases compensation benefits for veterans. U.S. Senate, Senate, U.S. Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs said Moran is a, is a ranking member and chairman of the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs. The Veterans Compensation Cost of Living Adjustment Act of 2023 bipartisan legislation will increase compensation benefits for veterans with service-connected disabilities and military survivors under the Department of Veterans Affairs. So it's important to bring up that distinction, okay? Not only is it service-connected disabled veterans that get this monetary benefit and that increase, it is also survivors of those veterans. Um, so, you uh, you could have uh, individuals receiving dependency and indemnity compensation, uh, and they would also get this increase. Now, I, I throw that out there because you would be surprised how many people have no clue that this is an available benefit, the dependency and indemnity compensation, right? So the very short version is it's kind of like a life insurance that pays out a monthly benefit, uh, kind of like an annuity. So you could receive as a survivor um, uh, of the, you know, the veteran passes away. And if they meet the certain criteria, then you as the survivor could, you know, anywhere between $1,500 to, you know, $3,000 a month, depending on, you know, different kind of variables uh, and even higher. So just important to know, right? All right, moving on. Uh, let's see here. U.S. Survivor benefits under the Department of Veterans Affairs. Senator Moran shared a comment about the legislation. We have a responsibility to provide care and support for our nation's veterans and their families, said Senator Moran. Many of these veterans rely on the VA for financial support, especially with current rising costs and inflation. Ensuring their benefits keep pace with these price increases will help provide disabled veterans and certain surviving spouses and children with peace of mind. I'm pleased the president has signed this, this legislation into law to provide veterans with the stability they deserve. Senator Tester shared a comment echoing Moran's sentiments. Sentiments. Cements. Whatever. Moving on. 
at, at a time when folks are struggling with rising costs from housing to groceries, veterans deserves, deserve absolute certainty when it comes to providing for their families, said Senator Tester. That's why I'm proud to have worked with Senator Moran and other colleagues to deliver a cost of living increase to millions of disabled veterans and survivors across the country, including 30,000 in my home state of Montana. As chairman, I agree, or as chairman, I'll always fight to make sure the men and women who put their lives on the line uh, get the support they need and earned. US Senate, U.S. Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs said the Senator's Veterans COLA Act would increase certain VA benefits, including disability compensation. So here we go. Here's the list. Disability compensation. So these are all VA benefits. Um, some may be new to you. So there could be new VA benefits that you were not aware of that you might want to look into or share with your spouse, or it could be something that's for you. So these are the ones that are affected by the cost of living increase when it goes into effect. So it is, now I lost my place. So VA benefits, including, there we go, including disability compensation, clothing allowances, and dependency and indemnity compensation for surviving spouses and children to reflect increases in the cost of living. It will directly benefit millions of disabled veterans and military survivors nationwide. The cost of living adjustment will be determined by the annual COLA adjustment to Social Security benefits as determined by the Social Security Administration and will go into effect December 1st 2023. The Social Security Administration bases their annual COLA adjustments on the Consumer Price Index as determined each December by the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics. The Veterans COLA Act is supported by the nation's leading veterans and survivors groups, including the American Legion, American Legion, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Disabled American Veterans, the DAV, Paralyzed Veterans of America, the PVA, AMVETS, Vietnam Veterans of America, Gold Star Wives, TAPS, Wounded Warrior Project, Military Officers Association of America, and Iraq and, and Afghanistan Veterans of America. So, of course, everybody supports it, right? Because what's the alternative? Nothing. That doesn't make any sense. So, of course, everybody's going to support it. Now, here's my thing to you. I did a video earlier on COLA today. And if you didn't watch it, go back and watch it. And for those that don't know, and it was said in here too, the VA cost of living increase is basically a mirror of the Social Security Administration's work for their increase. So as they put together all the work and they figure out what the cost of living increase should be, then the VA just adopts that. Here's the problem. The Senior Citizens League has already brought up that, look, for Social Security even, the majority of Social Security recipients are uh, senior citizens. And their uh, buying habits and their needs and wants and all that stuff, the things they spend money on is different than the greater population okay and so what their argument is you can't really just rely on the consumer price index because there's certain things that these recipients are purchasing that may not have um, had the same results with inflation ups and downs right maybe they stayed high so there needs to be a better way to accomplish what's trying to be accomplished, right? So what's trying to be accomplished is a adjustment to the amount of money to keep up with the costs of the things that you purchased last year versus this year. Well, if your costs of the things that you have to buy as a greater community, right? Not just you, 
the greater you, right? All for this instance, all the senior citizens, right? The greatest recipients of social security are senior citizens. So if they're spending money over here and their costs are higher, they didn't drop with everybody else's, well, now it's gonna cost them more because they get a smaller increase, if that makes sense. So my question is, what about on the veteran side, the disabled veteran side? Does the same hold true? Should we be getting a higher increase based on our spending habits and the things that we need to, to make our lives work? Do we have the same argument that the Senior Citizens League has? Should we, as a veteran community, work with the Senior Citizens League to devise a new way to calculate COLA? Makes sense to me. And I'll tell you that combined, if you combine the veterans of the United States, right? So it's just, it's just all of us, right? Veterans, supporters of veterans, and the senior citizens of America, and you combine all that to fight for and lobby for a better way to calculate COLA, we might actually get somewhere. So that's some food for thought. I'd love if for anybody who actually hung on, yeah, I'm sorry I saved that for the end, but for anybody who hung on, I'd love to see some comments on that and um, you know get some feedback on your your thoughts, right? So hey, with that, we'll go ahead and end it. I'm, now I'm getting too long. So I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.